Hi everybody, I'm Oscar Perales. I'm a Rotar actor from the District 4130 in Mexico and part of the Activator program from Rotar International. So working with youth is a key part on the peace building process, but another key part is working with the society. So Steve, what do you see the role of everyday citizens in peace building? What are some of the actionable steps that ordinary people can take to put into actions the important research and findings of the Institute. Yeah, this is a question I get often and a lot of the people when they think they're building peace, they think of the war in the Ukraine and how can I go about stopping that? But peace is an everyday activity, it's an everyday exercise. And really, sort of, we have a positive interaction with an individual, and that has a flow-on effect. Whereas if we have a negative inter interaction, it has another flow-on effect. So, look, peace at a very basic level, it's really simple. When you go into a coffee shop, you're going to get your coffee in the morning, be nice to the person behind the counter, make them feel good, say hi, <laughs> just being pleasant. And that is, in many ways, creating peace. It's also sort of just the way you deal with your family and with your fellow uh, workmates. It's a matter of sort of if something's starting to annoy you, it's a matter of just taking a little bit of time to think about it before reacting. Just that's and that's really simple. But it's more, but it's more than that. You can join local communities and do things within your community. And as we've already said many times in, in, in this series of interviews, it's like small developmental programs within your local community. They help bring peace. If it's a rotary club, they're uh, putting in some uh, you know, swings for kids to play on in the uh, underprivileged area. That just enlivens the kids, enlivens the parents a little bit to be more happy. Happy people tend to be peaceful people. And then you can always move on and join other organisations which are working on bigger issues, global issues. You can fund Organisations with small amounts of money, could it be just be $20 a month, all helps. You can sign petitions uh, for large organisations where they're trying to uh, lobby governments uh, or international organisations around the things you care for. So there's some of the things which people can do. I love uh, what Steve said, that peace is an everyday exercise. I think that is so true. And if we look at it that way, um, in small little increments, it's not trying to bite off. It's one bite of the apple, not trying to eat the whole apple at once. And I think that that's a, a wonderful, a wonderful way to look at it. One of the things that actually my husband, Nick, and I are doing during the, uh, the year that I'm serving as president is creating an Imagine Impact Tour. And what we're doing is we're traveling to, uh, we have seven areas of focus, but we're actually having eight stops, uh, eight global stops that we're going to be taking, um, including polio as a separate one outside of disease prevention and treatment. And so we're going to eight different locations to showcase the impactful, sustainable, uh, large-scale projects that Rotarians are doing in different parts of the world. And we're bringing along with us uh, top-tier media and influencers, uh, some celebrity in some of them, some social media people, and raising the eye line about what it is that we're doing, primarily to an audience outside of Rotary, so that they understand the kinds of things that we're doing. And I'll tell you a few of them in a second. Um, but also that when these stories are then told back through different media outlets and channels and and um, different ways, it creates point of pride for all of us seeing our stories being told as, as well. So these, each one of them, as I've said earlier, each one of our areas of focus leads to creating peace. So we're going to be going to the South Pacific Islands to highlight how Rotarians in Australia and New Zealand are immunizing 100,000 children for uh, pneumonia and for HPV and for rotavirus. We're going to be going into Uganda um, working with the Macquarie Peace Center there that we have established and um, the uh, cohort of students that's uh, currently at our, our Peace Center there. We're going into Nepal to talk with women there in terms of community and economic development and the education opportunities that have been provided for them that have helped take them um, 
into space of entrepreneurship in, in many ways. In Pakistan, we're going to be visiting with um, frontline aid workers who are providing immunizations uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, risking their own lives. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, eight of our immunized immunizing workers in uh, Afghanistan were assassinated while they were conducting uh, polio immunizations. These people are truly putting their lives um, at risk to try and ensure that every child receives this life-saving immunization. In Guatemala, we're going to be meeting with students, uh, particularly female teachers and moms and uh, students about uh, the power of education and literacy, basic education and literacy. In the United States, we're going to be looking at the pollination projects that are going on and the um, the environment and in particular uh, pollinator uh, types such as butterflies and bees to the um, the sustainable, the sustainability of our planet. Uh, so we're going to be going to a number of different places. Zambia is going to be focusing on the elimination of malaria um, out of our world. There is a target um, in our first project of scale that we're doing there to eliminate malaria in that country by 90%. And and we're doing it and we're making these strides. So every single time we focus on one of these kinds of things, it helps to create peace. And so being able to tell these stories and make sure that the world knows about the kinds of things that we're doing, um, I'm really excited about what's going to come out of that in, in the course of the next year.